Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chantel, and I have a digital planner shop and have been using GoodNotes on my iPad for years now, and I am so excited to see it finally made available with the launch of GoodNotes 6 for Microsoft Surface and for Android. I know that they're not going to be exactly the same app, but I thought today we would look at both a Microsoft Surface tab and a Samsung Galaxy tablet and see how the apps compare to the iPad version and how they compare to each other, if they're the same or not. You have three tiers of pricing for this as well. So you've got the free version. It's the same, I believe, as the free version for Apple iPad. And that's just three notebooks. So it's like a limited free version. And then for the Windows and Android version, you have a $6.99 version and a $9.99 version. So I believe in the future, the $9.99 version will be kind of universal across the board. And eventually you'll be able to sync up your notes across any device that you're using GoodNotes on if you're using that $9.99 annual subscription model and that is the same for the Android and the Windows version as well as the Apple version. So today I'm excited to just kind of take a first little tour through GoodNotes for Windows and for Android and see how it stacks up to my very favorite note-taking app of all time and if this is now what I would recommend for you if you're just getting started with note-taking digital note taking on an Android or Windows device, or if we wanna to stick to some of the apps that I've already kind of been recommending for Windows and Android. So if you're interested in seeing what the GoodNotes landscape kind of looks like, come along and we'll take a look. So when I look at the first interface here, it looks pretty similar to GoodNotes 6, except on the side here, you only have documents and shared and there isn't a marketplace. So I wonder if that also is going to mean that there aren't free elements and covers and things for you to download with your subscription in this version. So the first thing I wanna kinda of look at while we're here is to take a look at what the folders look like here because that was kind of a big fun update for GoodNotes 6. So I wanna kinda of see if that's the same here. So let's go ahead and make this. Well, that's cool. So you can write and it will turn into your typed writing on the tablet, so that's cool. Let's see if we can change some of these. No. So you just have like your standard blue folders here. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and add a new notebook. So you've got a bunch of fun options for covers here, but it is definitely nowhere near as advanced as it is for iPad. I'll just go ahead and say that off the bat. It kind of looks like an older version of GoodNotes for iPad. So let's go ahead and just pick a random cover and look at the interior pages. So you've got a bunch of templates here for sure, but they are really, this does really seem like an older version of GoodNotes. You've also got dark yellow and white paper. You don't have the ability to customize the way that you do in GoodNotes 6 for Apple just yet. So let's go ahead and create our notebook here. So once we get in here, the toolbar up top looks pretty much the same as it does in the good notes we know and love. So that is promising. Let's go ahead and go to the next page here and we can test out the pens. So we have all three of the same pens. You've got your fountain pen, you've got your ball pen, and you've got your brush pen. My favorite's the ball pen. So let's start with that. You have the ability to change your pen thickness and to set three here. And you also have your colors. I like this color, but let's look at the customization options. So you can put in a hex code and you can use these sliders to pick a color if you'd like as well. And you can go ahead and add that, but it doesn't stack up in your column, your top column, like it even did for GoodNotes 5. It looks like it is kind of like an older version where you save them in this little drop down. But again, I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead and test out this pen. So I really like the ballpoint pen. I would say that's pretty much the same. I love how responsive it is. I, would, I wouldn't say that there's like a significant difference between it and the Apple version. I like the fountain pen too here. And let's go ahead and try the brush pen. To be honest, I never use the brush pen. Yeah, it's there, it works. 
So I like all the pens. All the pens are exactly the same, so that is promising. Next up, we have our eraser. You've just got your standard and your stroke. You don't have the precision eraser here, and it doesn't seem like you have the option to turn on erase highlighter only. I think that's fine. In your highlighter, you have the option to turn on draw in a straight line. You've got your same spaces to set a size for a small, a medium, and a large. Three places for highlighter colors here, and I assume it'll be the same where you can, yep, pick your colors and add them to the drop down if you'd like. The next thing you have is your shape tool. So the way the shape tool works is that it'll snap to a shape when you use it. I think that works well as well. And then you've got your lasso tool. Interestingly, I can't tap on the lasso tool to select what it selects. So I wonder if we can move that around, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and add an image. So the lasso definitely works and it's nice, but it definitely doesn't allow you to select what you want to move. So if you had an image and a picture and you just wanted to grab one and not the other, you would just kind of have to carefully grab at a section. You wouldn't be able to choose to not grab your images or to choose to not grab your handwriting or whatever. It is again, just like a little bit more limited, but I am excited to see that we have the elements tool here. That's one of my favorite features of GoodNotes. And you've got your pre-added sticky notes. You've got mind map shapes. Oh, these are so fun. I wonder if you can change the color. Let's see. No, you can't. But that's okay. You have some back to school stickers here. Some fun text stamps, it says. You've got everyday stickers. These are so cute. I really like this little bubble bath one. And that is what you have here. But the best part of, oh, that's cool. And it allows you to grab just part of it as well. So if I wanted to, interesting. So there are bits of the elements that you can move around. That's very similar to the way that elements work in GoodNotes 6. Elements in GoodNotes 6 allows you to save things the way that they are so that you can change colors of separate elements, for lack of a better term, if you needed to in the future. Let's go ahead and get rid of this because kind of the best part of elements is that you can write something and then you can add it to elements to use again. So let's just go ahead and write hi and see. There doesn't seem to be an option to add writing to your elements. And if we were to add a photo, no. It doesn't seem like you can add anything to elements at this time. So that's kind of a shame. It seems like the elements tool for Android is really just like where they store built-in stickers because you can't add new stickers in this way. That is kind of a bummer. I hope that that changes in the future. Um, we kind of already looked at the image tool, so that works. And then you got a text tool. So it seems like you've got a little bit of customization up here. I like the way that the Samsung tab kind of prompts you to write in here. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. It makes a really fun sound. So that's cool. Let's see if we can customize it. Okay, so you can change the color to whatever you would like. There seems to be a lot more options for pen colors, but I'm not seeing any place where you can change the font. Yeah, I think you might be, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like you can only use the one built-in font. And there isn't an option to lasso things and change the color. I'm noticing that as well. But you do have your laser pointer and you've got both options for it. These are kind of cool if you use these to give presentations. I don't find I use the laser button a whole bunch, but I know a bunch of people who do for work and for school purposes. So that is kind of the interior here. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like if we were to add our own digital planner. 
So you've got an option to import, which is nice. I might go ahead and switch this into portrait. I'm using my portrait planner because that is my personal favorite. That's what I use. So we can go ahead and tap on that. It loaded super fast and that looks great. It seems like you have an option here to turn on and off your pen tool, very similarly to the way that the pen tool works in the note six. So if I turn that off, I can go ahead and scroll through these. You can also change your direction. I've switched my scrolling direction to horizontal, I believe, but you can also go vertical. And then since we have our writing tools off, you should be able to click your hyperlinks. Okay, I had a customer tell me that they used one of my planners with GoodNotes for Samsung and they noticed that they couldn't click on their hyperlinks and I'm seeing that to be true. That is really a huge bummer. I would even go so far as saying that that makes digital planning on Good notes for Android, absolutely not even something that's worth doing. Digital planners are such large files. The best way to navigate them is by clicking on your hyperlinks. So if you have to go through and scroll through every page, it's just not gonna be super practical. So what I would say is the way that this is right now would be fine for making your own notebooks that are gonna be pretty small so you don't have to navigate too hard through them. I would even say it would be fine for adding a template that's just like a one page template that you just copy and paste. But if you're using digital planners, I would still say that Note Shelf is gonna be better than this because you can use hyperlinks. And I've even heard Penly is great. So I would recommend that instead of this, let's try the Microsoft version and see if that has a little bit more than this does. I'm a little bummed to be honest with you. Okay. So I've got the Surface here. Again, this is an older Surface. It's one of my dad's old computers that he lent to me. If I need to, I would get another one. So GoodNotes is open here as well. It looks the same. Let's go ahead and stick it in landscape. It looks exactly the same as the Android version. So let's go ahead and look at folders. So far, this is looking the exact same as the Android version of it, so you don't have a ton of customization there. Let's look at the notebooks. Yeah, it seems like these are the same covers as well, and it really seems like the tools and everything are the same here. Yeah, so this seems to be exactly the same as the Android version that we just looked at. Let's go ahead and add, oh, everything synced up. I'm using the same account on both of them, so that's nice. You can pay for one and use them on your Surface and your other tablet as well. So it seems like it imported my planner already. So that's cool, it was fast. Let's go ahead and turn off this pen and get into read only mode. And you know, based on what I'm seeing here, I do not think hyperlinks work in this. I'm gonna go ahead and email GoodNotes and see if they get back to me before I finish editing and putting this up. Maybe I'm missing something. Somebody let me know if I'm missing something. And if there is some kind of setting I need to turn on to use hyperlinks, but if there's no hyperlinks in this version of GoodNotes, I would say, to be honest, you should use another note-taking app if you're gonna be digital planning. And to be honest, it's just, it seems like a very strange oversight on their part. I don't know. GoodNotes has said on their website that we're going to get compatibility across the board at some point here for all devices. So I'm imagining that that's gonna mean that we're gonna get like a GoodNotes 6 version for Android and Windows eventually, but that is definitely not what I have right now. If I'm doing something wrong, somebody let me know. I'm definitely gonna contact GoodNotes as well and see if there's a setting I need to turn on. If there is, I will update this video. I'll update this video anyway when more updates come to GoodNotes for Windows and to Android. But as of right now, this isn't my number one favorite app. If you wanna see what I would recommend using for digital planning on an Android or a Windows tablet, let me know and I'll do a video on that. I have one, but it's a few years old. I still really like NoteShelf, but I'm pretty sure there are a few new apps that we can kind of go through that do a little bit more than GoodNotes is doing right now. So that's kind of a bummer. If you found this video useful or entertaining, let me know down below and I'll catch you next time. Bye.